This presentation is entitled Permapure Best Practices for Purge Gas Configurations When Using a Nafion Sample Gas Dryer. So we're going to talk about generating the purge gas and vapor pressure differential for the Nafion dryer and how to integrate a Permapure dryer into your analyzer design or scientific experiment and how to test the performance of your setup. This is probably the most important uh, part to master uh, when integrating a dryer into your experiment or system design. Uh, there's a lot of options here and a lot of ways to tweak the performance uh, for both bad and good. And understanding uh, the options and the variables will help you to optimize your dryer system. So we want to start with best practices uh, concerning when t at times when dry purge gas is available. So as you might know, all of our performance curves have been generated uh, using 40 degrees, minus 40 degrees C uh, dew point instrument air. This is a typical specification for dried compressed air that is found in chemical process plants and refineries and such, and also uh, in laboratories where compressed air is available. Uh, that is not always the case. This is not always available, but this is the most uh, common way uh, to test the performance of the dryer, which is why we use that in our own literature. This diagram here shows how to set that up, but most importantly, it shows you how to test the difference between the moisture content of your gas at your inlet and your gas at the outlet. So that when what you really want to do here is test the performance of the dryer by comparing the moisture level uh, before and after. So here you can see uh, in the way our typical dryers run that you have the sample gas inlet on your left and exiting dry towards the right and you have your purge gas in counterflow entering uh, from the left and exiting to the right. There you could see the instrument air inlet and a needle valve controlling your flow. So the first point there is looking at your purge gas flow rate, typically two to times of two, two to three times of the sample flow is what we recommend to be adjusted as necessary for optimum performance. Uh, for instrument quality compressed air, our recommended purge gas, uh, the dew point of this purge gas is typically minus 40 degrees C. Like I mentioned before, most of our performance curves have been made using instrument air. We also assume that the instrument air is clean, free of oil and dirt, which is very important. There's also what we call standard quality compressed air. So a lot of plants don't have the best air. We consider standard wet compressed air, which may carry an oil mist must be filtered clean as dirt and oil in the air will collect on the dryer tubes on the outside of the dryer tubes and cause a drop in performance over time. Uh, this is very critical. Uh, we've seen this in a couple of instances where dirt collects and the dryers need to be tossed. You also have the option of deploying a local air compressor. An air compressor with an ultra low dew point rating may be deployed in an analyzer station for clean and dry purge gas. Many of our customers use nitrogen or other cylinder gas like argon. Sometimes these are carrier gases that are used in combustion style analyzers that are then run back as purge gas uh, because it's very uh, cost effective to do so. Some customers don't have instrument air and they don't want to use a vacuum pump, so they use nitrogen or other cylinder gas. Using ultra dry cylinder gas with a dew point of minus 60 or minus 70 can yield even better results than shown on our performance curves, but it is pricey. And so I recommend really going back to the first point is adjusting your purge gas flow rate. If you have an application where you don't need to get it as dry as the dryer can do, consider reducing your purge gas flow rate 
uh, to save some costs. One thing that we recently found is that you don't necessarily need an ultra dry perch gas to get good performance from your dryer. Uh, we've had some instances where people use a perch gas that has been dried to minus 10 or minus 15 degrees C, and this has proven effective enough to dry the sample to the level that the customer needs. And that's a topic that I cover in other presentations that all our customers have different applications and they have different requirements for how dry they need to get their sample. The next phase of this presentation is going to concentrate on how to use a vacuum pump to drive the pressure differential between the membrane in order to generate your perch gas and generate effective moisture transfer. Now this is a little bit complicated and while we really suggest that any uh, customers that are looking to use a dryer with a vacuum pump to understand this point that for every vacuum pump and dryer combination that there is an optimum performance point that needs to be found for the system and you take a look at this graph we have two curves shown on the graph the top curve is the dryer performance uh, so dew point versus uh, the vacuum and that's the vacuum that is generated by the uh, vacuum pump and the other perch gas uh, the other uh, curve is the vacuum pump performance of flow versus vacuum of the actual vacuum pump you could see that's a typical uh, performance curve for a vacuum pump, whether it's a Parker or a KNF. That is, as you restrict the flow and increase the vacuum that the or deepen the vacuum that the pump is performing, uh, as you increase, as you, as you deepen that vacuum, as you restrict the flow, the performance of the dryer continues to improve until a point where the flow rate of the purge gas is enough to remove, physically remove the moisture. Uh, and a vacuum deep enough to physically get the moisture to move from the inside of the tube to the outside of the tube. If you restrict that any further, you're not pulling enough of the water out and you're not sweeping enough of the water away from the membrane and as a result the performance gets worse so for every combination of, of, of uh, pump and dryer the optimal performance point of flow and vacuum needs to be achieved needs to be discovered as shown in the diagram so the way this is done is with your setup there similar to the other setups you have your moisture level meter or your dew point meter before the inlet of your uh, dryer and at the outlet of your dryer and you're comparing that performance right you restrict the flow of the purge gas by closing the needle valve while watching the moisture level at the dew point sensor located at the sample gas outlet the sweet spot or optimal performance occurs when the vacuum is at its highest point and the flow rate is still high enough to sweep the water vapor away. And this is an important note. During testing, it might take 15 minutes or more for the dryer performance to stabilize in order to make a determination. I want to make this point that using a Nafion dryer is, is not like using any type of other product, any type of electronic product or product that has been designed. We are managing the intrinsic uh, properties of a material and that material is somewhat unpredictable so it takes some time for the performance of the membrane to adjust to its new conditions so let's look at how this works we have a couple of different options uh, let's look at drying with atmospheric air under vacuum so it's possible uh, if you filter regular ambient air it's possible uh, to use that ambient air to dry your sample gas as long 
as you pull that vacuum low enough to make that possible. So you, in some cases, you use this where no external pet perch gas is available or desirable. So where you don't have the ability to connect up instrument air. As I mentioned before, the vacuum level and flow rate must be optimized for each vacuum pump dryer configuration. The air must be filtered clean. Dirt and oils can deposit on the outside of the tubes in lower performance. This is particularly true in a lot of areas where these dryers are installed. If it's in a chemical plant or on a ship, for example, uh, there is a lot of uh, you know, dirt, air, and other contaminants in the atmosphere. And over time, if you're not filtering that out, that's going to deposit in, in your tubes. So the major disadvantage with this type of um, setup is that the drying performance will be dependent upon the moisture level of the atmosphere air. The effect of the ambient moisture level is less as the vacuum level increases. Uh, and so it's important to get that uh, vacuum level down. We recommend uh, about 250 to 200 millibar absolute vacuum to get an optimal performance from uh, a setup like this and the lower the better so the next one is recycling the sample gas with the vacuum we call this the reflux method uh, this is uh, similar to the atmospheric method except that the full amount of the sample gas is routed back to the dryer as the purge gas after it leaves the analyzer What's good about this is that it provides a constant dryness level at the output when run continuously. To improve performance, the recycled gas may be further dried in a second stage with desiccant before it is routed to the purge inlet to further improve system performance. What's interesting is that this can also be used for batch analyzers. This is where uh, you have combustion style analyzers that uh, combust a sample at a time. In this case, what has to happen is that uh, the sample goes into the dryer, the moisture goes right into the, to the, to the dryer, and it's removed almost instantaneously. But then you need to have some time uh, for the purge gas to uh, cycle through the dryer and dry the rest of the dryer out for the next batch. Sometimes that might take a few minutes, but we have a couple of people that do that with their analyzers. Let's look at our last curve here. This is split sample gas with vacuum. This adds an additional variable, but this is actually our most popular method. So if you actually take a look at the amount of dryers that we sell, most of them are used in applications that use a split sample gas. This gives you the added variable in that uh, you have the dried gas teed off at the outlet where a portion is going to the analyzer or a process uh, inside the analyzer. And another portion is going back through uh, the needle valve, back at, through the dryer as a purge gas. So there you have an additional variable. Not only do you have to look at the vacuum level and that variable. You also have to look at how much perch gas do I tee off? And that perch gas has to be added to the required sample gas flow. So if your analyzer requires two liters a minute and you get the optimum flow for the purge at 0.5 liters a minute, you have to size your dryer for 2.5 liters a minute. So this is similar again to the reflux method previously described, except it channels a portion of the sample gas through the Nafion tubing, serving as the purge gas before the analyzer. So choose the split sample method if it is not possible or practical to route the analyzer exhaust back to the gas dryer. The dryer must be upsized for the increased flow rate, adding the portion used for the purge gas to the sample gas flow rate required for the analyzer. Additionally, the right perch gas amount will be needed to be selected to provide optimum drying performance. This also provides a consistent dryness level at the output when run continuously. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, contact us on our website at permapure.com.